Amen. in the book of Luke this morning. We want to welcome anybody that may be watching this on Facebook or YouTube and we do I think I need to say that again, right? But uh we welcome each one that happens to watch this. We pray that God will give you a word through this message. And this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about temptation and what life throws our way. And uh, I think sometimes we in the church try to put on airs. Uh, we try to pretend that we don't ever have a problem. <laughs> now, I, I don't believe that we as such, I'm talking about the universal church here in America, uh, we've taken it for granted how blessed we are. And for some reason, it's as if we have figured out how to bless ourselves. And people feel that their accomplishments in life is all about them. <laughs> I tell you, I believe that God is in control of everything. I don't believe there's anything that happens that's without God's uh, knowledge. There's a lot of things that are done that aren't done right. A lot of things that are done that are done good. Uh, our Sunday school lesson was kind of a little on this line this morning too, but if y'all would stand with me, I'm going to read the first two chap two verses in chapter 4. Amen. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And all those days he did not eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you in the name of the one that was without sin. In the name of the one who overcome temptation and conquered it. Father, I just pray right now, God, that you would just speak to each one of our hearts and let us have an understanding that temptation in and of itself is not a sin. It's that we indulge in the temptations of this world. That we become sinful. Father, hide me behind the cross this morning. Lord, just give us a desire and an anointing, Lord, to bring this word forth to the church. Father, as you would have us speak, Lord, let us hear. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Now, this morning, the first thing in chapter 4 of the book of Luke, it identified the anointing that was on Jesus. He went anointed into the wilderness. 
people often say to me, Brother Mike, how come when I get blessed so much, how come the enemy then tries to attack me the hardest? Hmm? Why is it when we have an awesome service or the Lord moves spectacularly in my life that I find I'm bombarded with the enemy's thoughts and things of this world. But I don't want you to count yourself strange because we have one here by example being the Christ, the Son of God, God in flesh, who went through the same things that you and I go through. I don't believe there's a temptation in this world that Satan didn't try to throw his way to get his attention to worship him. Now, I... I want us to understand Satan was the very one that was cast out of he out of heaven, Lucifer, uh, that he had no authority there no more. He just accuses the saints. Satan is just your accuser. Okay? He is not your Lord. He is not one that you worship. Matter of fact, I don't even think he's one that we should fear. We need to fear God, the one that's going to judge us. Amen? We need to fear Him. And we understand as long as we walk in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, amen, there is nothing that the enemy can bring our way that can give us up to sin, okay? <clears throat> I know a lot of people, they think, well, Brother Mike, I keep having these reoccurring thoughts. I... I keep struggling with thoughts in my mind. <laughs> Let me tell you what, thoughts doesn't have to be put into fruition. In other words, you don't have to practice what thoughts that are coming in to your mind because we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen? Yeah. More than. <laughs> Praise God. So I don't, you know, I, I wish we had a lot of young converts here because I really believe that this message is going out to those that are young in the Lord, thank God we got one here, all right, two here, maybe three here, <laughs> praise God. But I want you to understand that as we learn and, and become more confident in our faith, we learn how to bind and rebuke the enemy when he comes at us, okay? Now, Satan <laughs> caught Jesus at one of his weakest moments physically. I don't know if y'all have ever fasted for a period of time, but it, it's, it's not easy sometimes. The Bible says he went without food for 40 days. Wow. Now that whole time he was fasting and communing with the Father, there was a third party showed up, which was the devil. Amen. It says, after he returned from Jordan, he was led by the Spirit. In other words, the Holy Ghost told him to go and fast and commune with the Father. So he went. He was obedient to the Lord. Being 40 days, he was tempted of the devil. For 40 whole days. I've had people tell me, and I've repeated this before, that once they got saved, the devil never bothered them no more. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I don't think you know the Christ that I know. <laughs> because the one, the adversary that comes against us is the very one who wants to take us to hell. Okay? He wants to win our souls. And it says after it was ended... He afterwards hungered. Okay, he, re he realized his need for food after 40 days. Now, he must have been having revival in the wilderness. Amen? There must have been something that had come over him like we don't understand. He had such commune with the Father. I believe that his relationship with God literally gave him strength and sustenance that he had need of 
while he was spending time with his God. People say, I fast. Well, how do you fast? You go around moaning and groaning because you're hungry? That ain't a fast. All right? Fast is when you set aside time, amen, to be in the presence of God. I believe in fasting. The Bible teaches us we should fast and pray. Okay? We need to set aside time to do that, that the relationship that we have with God would grow stronger, but I want to guarantee you something. The closer you get to God, the more the enemy tries to afflict you. Okay? He don't like you being close to God. But you have to make up a determination within your spirit that no matter what the enemy wants, I'm going to choose to get closer to my God. Amen? Amen? And it says that the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made into bread. Now he, Satan knew who he was. But he was, see, he was trying to create doubt in the flesh. Jesus was born of the flesh. But remember this, the Spirit of God was still in him because he was God, yet he was man. But Satan, he puts the word out, If... You be the Son of God. Command that this stone be made into bread. Brother Ray, he could have done that at any time. <laughs> he could have spoke to any rock and turned it into bread because let me tell you something. Everything that was here, he created. It says there was nothing that was not created by him. Wow. When we think on that, and then Jesus answers him saying, it is written. What does that mean? It is written to the house of Israel. It is written of God. God has made this command, amen, and determination that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. We need to be living in the word. Okay? The more of the word we get in our spirit, the more of God and the closer relationship we have with our God, our Creator. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, all right, Satan didn't quit. He didn't quit tempting him. He didn't quit trying to steal his mindset. He didn't quit to, trying to get his attention so he could go another direction than what God had intended for him to do here on this earth. It says, he says, then the devil took him up into a high mountain and showed him, <laughs> boy, oh boy, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Satan literally took him to this place where he could see all the kingdoms of the world. Everything. There wasn't nothing that he didn't see. <laughs> and then the enemy goes on and he says, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, to whomsoever I will give it. If thou, if therefore, that if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. I'll just give it all to you if you'll just bow down and worship me. How persistent is the enemy? Very. And as long as we listen to his lies, as long as we listen and, and, and don't come against, amen, the words that Satan speaks to our spirits, amen, we can overcome it through and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? <laughs> then Jesus answered unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. 
For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou worship. See, Satan, he didn't want to speak the words that were the words of God. He wanted to speak and cause confusion in the mind of the Word of God here on this earth. He, he wanted to speak because he knew that physically Jesus was weak, so he assumed that spiritually he was also weak. Now, amen, we need to be spiritually sound and full of the Holy Ghost, see. That's where we overcome, by the power of, of the Spirit of God that lives in us. And I'm here to tell you, if the Spirit of God don't live in here, in your being this morning, you will be confounded to the things of this world. It's that simple. You choose God or mammon. In other words, you choose to worship the flesh or you choose to worship the Creator of the flesh. What do you choose this day? Whom shall you serve? Amen. Satan didn't give up there on the second try either, did he? He took him to the third place. It says that he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. <laughs> if you're really this strong Christian, Satan will challenge you in these same manners. Okay? He'll ask you to do something stupid. To prove your faith. I've got news for you. You don't have to do nothing to prove your faith to Satan except serve God. Okay? We need to realize that this morning. We don't have to be confounded to the things and the temptations that Satan could bring us. And he, see, Satan said, if you be the Son of Man, jump down. Just jump off. Why? Why was Satan so interested in him? He, he did not want to give Christ the glory and the credit for who he was here on this earth. It says, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Now what happened here? Satan spoke the word of God. It is written, now, I, when I read this, this word is not just for Jesus. This word is for the whole body of Christ. It is written. <laughs> Amen. It is written. Praise God. We need to understand this. For it is written that, the, that he shall give his angels over thee to keep thee. Now, how many of y'all believe that? How many of y'all know that we're surrounded right now, huh? By the presence of holy angels. Amen. There's war going on in heavenly places. Uh, praise God over your soul. Satan wants to kill you. God wants to give you life. Uh, amen. Satan wants to steal your soul. God come to give you eternal life and heaven's bliss. Uh, we need to understand this morning. We don't have to give in to the temptation. Even though Satan may twist the scripture to try to get you to do something that is foolish. We talked about that a little bit in Sunday school this morning. How people try to twist and rearrange the Word of God. But it goes on here. It says in verse 11, And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And he's keeping on. In other words, just jump. I was reading a book one time, a bunch of young people, they had been to this revival and they thought they had strong faith and they went out to a pier. And it was a bad storm out in the ocean and they, they'd walked out to the end of the pier and they thought they was going to walk on water. Okay? Oh, they thought the Lord was, I mean, you know, they was all eat up with God. They'd read the scriptures about it. Moses part in the Red Sea. They'd read the scriptures where Jesus walked on waters. They'd read the scriptures where Peter had walked on water. <laughs> Amen. They thought their eyes were on Jesus. So they jumped off the pier trying to walk on water and every one of them drowned it. 
Don't do foolish things just because you're trying to prove who God is in your life. Amen. Just be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Walk in God's glory. Every time the enemy comes against you, bind and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I do that around my kids, <laughs> my grandkids. I bind and rebuke the enemy that he has no charge over them. <laughs> I believe that my God hears my call. Amen? You have power, just like Jesus was setting an example to the church that we need to be persistent in our faith no matter what the flesh situation the flesh is in. Spiritually, we need to be strong. What does that say to the church? We need an awakening. Amen? Not that you can walk on water. Not that you can part the Red Sea. Amen. We're here in this life getting prepared to meet Jesus in the clouds of glory. Amen. We need to be excited. And it says, And Jesus answered and said unto him in verse 12, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay, now we got... We've got churches here in America that pick up rattlesnakes and copperheads and cotton mouths. And they run around and when they get bit, <laughs> amen, I think of that scripture, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay? Don't do something foolish to try to prove who God is in your life. Just living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in His great love. Amen. I want you to realize this morning, the Lord loves you. If you're trying to prove your faith to God, amen, prove it to God, not to the world. All right? Be faithful to the Lord. Amen. I believe that the Word of God speaks on charity, if we really think about that, is the greatest of all the gifts that God by love. God-like love, that we love one another. Christ loved the church. Amen. The husbands love their wives. Amen. We need to understand that God has a purpose for our lives. And if we're a changed individual church, we need to start living like we've come out of a fast in the wilderness, full of the Spirit. You say, Brother Mike, I just don't seem to have the power. Amen. The power is not of you. It's in you. It's the power of God that lives in you that will help you overcome and conquer. In verse 13 it says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't for a period of time before he come back. We need to understand that sometimes we may be walking and think, man, I'm in glory land. Satan has not bothered me for two days, bless God. <laughs> Amen. No temptations, no thought of sin, no, nothing that I had to overcome. <laughs> and then, by the way, here swoops in the enemy again, <laughs> trying to get our attention and steal our faith and destroy the relationship that we have with our wives or husbands or parents and children. Amen. Satan tries to do everything he can to turn your eyes away from him. Christ, the Savior. As long as you keep your mind set in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. I'm going to skip down to verse 18 here now. This is Christ speaking in verse 18. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Y'all believe that? Yes. Praise God. Going on here, he says, Preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of the sight of the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Well, you know what he's talking about us right here. Amen. The Lord's talking about those that have been 
in the life of sin. He said, I have come to preach the gospel. He didn't just come to preach it. He come to set us free, church. He come to deliver. Amen. To heal and to give liberty to them that are bruised. You know, there's some people that I know that are just so browbeat. They're down and out. They don't know where to turn. Amen. They've been abused. They've been told they're not valuable in life. Let me tell you, you're as valuable in life as anyone else. God loves you just like He loves me. Amen. We need to understand that God is not a respecter of person. Amen. He predestined for you. Amen. To know Him and walk in His relationship. Praise God. He says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, what are we saying here? Amen. We got to preach the word of the Lord. Christ knew he was coming to the end of his journey. He knew that he would hang on an old rugged cross. He knew that he would die. Amen. And go to hell and deliver the captives and set them free. <laughs> Praise God. And take the keys away from Satan to hell and the grave. So that those that believe in him could walk in a renewed life. Praise God. When we die as a Christian, bless God, we don't stay in that body. We leave that body and we go to the place that God has prepared for us that love him. And he closed the book. <laughs> And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasted on him. <laughs> and he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You've heard the word of the Lord. Amen. The decision now is on your hands. The relationship you choose to have with God is within your control. Come on. People say, well, I, I just can't find time to pray. Yeah, you can. Well, I can't pray to find time to, 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 to go to church. Yeah, you can. I can't find time, I can't find time, I can't find time is not going to be an excuse in the presence of God. The relationship that we have with God is the decision that we make in life. When God has said go and told us where to go, that's where we need to be. When God says I have released you from that place. Amen. That's when you need to hear what God is saying to you. I believe God's going to fill this house. People say, look at it right now. It's about empty. It sure is. But see, I believe that things are getting ready to happen in this world as we've never seen before. Huh? We need to wake up, church. We're living at the end of this journey. Don't mourn it. Rejoice in it that God has found us faithful. Amen. When Jesus comes back in the clouds of glory, my prayer is everyone that's sitting under the sound of my voice this morning would be caught up into glory. Amen. My prayer this morning is that we all have a relationship with God that is not on the outside, but it's on the inside. What's on the inside comes out, don't it? Huh? Oh, my. The Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. We can sing praises or we can moan and groan in our own pity. We can worship or we can nag. It's a choice. I choose to worship. I choose to exalt the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful that my Father God loved me enough to make sure there was a sacrifice to 
for all my sins. This morning, as we stand, if you would, with us, Bobby Kieran, please. I want you to hear that God has something better for you because the Word of God has been fulfilled. Now we're just waiting for His coming. Amen. If there's one here, they have someone they need to pray for. Amen. Be bold in the Lord this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that your anointing would touch the hearts of those that are watching. Lord, those that hear your word this morning. Father God, I pray, Lord, that the power of the Holy Ghost would go through the wilderness with them, whatever they're experiencing, whatever struggles they're going through. Father God, that we know we're never alone. Lord, because you live in us. Father, if there's those that haven't been filled with the Spirit of God, Lord, I pray that today would be the day. Lord, that they receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that makes it easier for that journey through the wilderness. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.